This is from the book of Matthew, chapter 1, verses 18 through chapter 2, verses 12. Now the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be a child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid and take Mary as your wife. For the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but he had no marital relations with her until she had born a son, and he named him Jesus. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born? Been born? King of the Jews. For we observed his star as it, at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him, and calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is, the shep who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had, been, that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gold, gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. Showing up at the manger scene, right? 
right? All of our manger scenes that have a wise men show up there. This is later, right? The child, the, you know, now not infant, infant, baby Jesus, you know. This is, uh, this is baby Jesus a little bit older. And, and here they are traveling to find Jesus following the star. So, just a little bit of a challenge there for you. One of the key pieces of the Christmas story that I pick up on out of all of this, which there's so much text here, Emmanuel, God is with us. Now you'll remember that last week we talked together about how to make the most out of Christmas this year, considering the state of our culture as we look around and you're all masked and we have to be careful with each other. And we're not visiting our family members like we once were. I have failed to get a hug from just about everybody that I want to hug from for months and months now. And I desperately need a hug, right? Do you feel, do you feel that? If you come from a family of others, you do. Yeah. Yeah. I know. That's, that's how many of you feel, isn't it? And you want Christmas to have the same feeling and meaning that it had for you when you were a child. We try to recreate that. And so as we've talked about making the most of Christmas, what do we do first and foremost on Advent? One, we're challenged to bring everything that we have for Jesus. Yes, we bring the good things, the gifts, the resources, the T3, right? Time, talent, treasure, all of our giftings we we bring it all, but in bringing it all, we're bringing the bad too. We bring Jesus every part that we want to hide from Jesus. Everything that we want to sort of sweep under the rug, like when, when, when we clean house, right? And you're going to have somebody over, right? You're going to have the president over. You can get rid of everything that doesn't look right. And you put it away. But all the things that we have in our world, we're bringing to Jesus too, right? So Advent 1, to make the most out of Christmas, we bring everything to Jesus. Advent 2, remember that God is with us. Now, how many of you guys have seen the movie, It's a Wonderful Life? If you haven't, I want you to watch It's a Wonderful Life before Christmas. All right? So how many of you have not seen the movie, It's a Wonderful Life? Anybody willing to confess? A couple of them. So go ahead and, and and so I'm sorry to tell you that it, you might watch it in black and white. Right? There we is a colorized it. version. We watched it last night. She walked out. You walked <laughs> out? You missed your chance. Oh no, Whitney. <laughs> well, now you get a do-over. And so you might even see you might find a colorized version now. Yeah, there is a colorized version, so you don't have to feel like you're watching something that's prehistoric. Now, the beautiful thing about stories is stories never, they just don't get dated. There's just something beautiful about a good story. And It's a Wonderful Life is one of my favorite Christmas movies. I think it's a great story, but I want to turn it on its head. And I want to make a pitch, the worst movie pitch that I think that we could try to pitch. It would never get actually, uh, you know, made into a movie. But it's sort of this idea of God is with us and it's a wonderful life. Can you imagine your world in which Jesus never existed? Now that sounds like an awful story. That's not a good Christmas story of hope, is it? Now, if we write this, I don't want to dwell in this thought. This is like, to me, torture. This is an ugly spot, so I'll move us out of that as soon as I can. But just in, like, in It's a Wonderful Life, just like that man is so desperate to get make things right, as he is looking into his world, a world in which he no longer exists. He 
Can you imagine what even this time of year would look and feel like for us if what we read today did not happen? What if Herod was successful? The wise man. You don't think what? Well, I don't, I don't think we'd be together in this building, would we? It might be chaos. It might be chaos, sure. Like, nothing existed. It's hard to imagine. But if Herod had been tipped off by the wise men and then successful in killing Jesus, we wouldn't be here reading anything about it. We wouldn't be talking about it. There would be nothing. And so many of the things that we do and say externally would change. But so much for us internally, the hope and the love, it wouldn't be the same, would it? The joy, the peace, it wouldn't be the same. I can't imagine what that world is like. Now maybe, if you could sort of write that movie out a little bit and see how awful and ugly it is, you can see how bright the light is in the darkness. Because when Jesus now is introduced again to you suddenly, and the angel gets his wings, kind of a thing, right? You know, the end of the movie, and lo and behold, here is Jesus. What a relief that is. It makes hope, love, joy, and peace explode onto the scene. Because Jesus is so desperately needed. Without Jesus, I have no hope. I will have no love. And whatever love that is there will be totally selfishly driven. It will be false, fabricated, Joy would be a fraud. It would be fake. It would be a facade, a mask. And the peace would be totally medicated, driven by pharmaceuticals because there's no peace without Jesus. Jesus brings all of that to us. We live in the world together. Week after week, we are reminded together that God is with us. We live in that world, that reality. God is with us, Emmanuel. We have Him all the time. But sometimes we need to have that George Bailey moment where we realize that not everybody does. We need to take Jesus out and see the world without Jesus in order to know how important it is that Jesus even use us to bring Jesus to, to others. The wise men, they didn't consider the consequence of bringing the message that there was a Savior, a Messiah. Surely, as wise men, described in the Bible as wise, they would know better than to tell King Herod about his rival, the king. As we share the message of Jesus, let's not consider, let's not consider that Jesus will be rejected, that others will try to kill our beloved Jesus. Let's have faith that God is going to make a way for that good news to get out no matter what. 
We are just going to talk about Jesus. And that's okay. That takes courage and that takes hope and faith. Sure. But let's stand in those spots. Let's stand there knowing that God is with us. And God can be in everyone's world that we bring it to. And so, to make the most out of Christmas this year, we of course, first and foremost, remember that yes, as lonely as we may feel, if you feel isolated, and I thank God that we can be in this place together, I really do. I am so glad that we have at least this shared experience face to face as a community of people that love and care for one another. Praise God. Not everyone has this. There are folks that are far more isolated than any of us. And it's hard to know how to bring God to them. But that's our challenge, isn't it? Lord, we thank you that you are with us. And I pray, God, that you would help us to bring you everywhere we go, even when it looks threatening, even when we know you're going to be rejected, no matter what, we're bringing Jesus. We can do that. We can have that George Bailey moment and understand how important Jesus is to everyone. So, bring the good news. Have the courage to bring it and the faith that God can protect it even when someone wants to kill it. I pray that you don't feel isolated or lonely because Emmanuel, God, is with us. <laughs>